Now we're going to take a look at heat sink number two. And on Amazon, this is MHQ JRH M.2 2280 SSD heat sink. Double sided heat sink with thermal silicone pad for an M.2 NVMe PCI Express SSD or an M.2 SATA. But everything we do is about the M.2 NVMe PCI Express SSD. And that would be this one in this box. Well, I got to tell you that first heat sink was kind of interesting and fascinating, and I'm not real sure about what I want to make of it. But uh, as I've said before, I know enough to know I need to know more because the more I learn, the more I realize how little I know. And any of you guys that have the patience to watch this, I appreciate it. And by the way, this is Builder By. My name is Gil Boyd. Welcome. Okay, let's see what we've got. MHQ JRH. We have a customer service card, a manual, Yay Tang, and there's our parts. Nice. We've got a heat sink, a thermal pad, a screwdriver, and some screws to assemble this with. Nothing like parts. The last one felt like something that belonged on a model. Looks like this one's going to do the same thing. So we need to get the card out so we can work on it. Probably what we'll do when we're finished with these, we'll line these all up. And in the last video of the six, we'll do a summation. So we've got to get that off so we can swap out. Now there are two that have some bulk to them. This is one. There's another one that's a little bit bigger than this. And I'm curious how this is going to work. There should be two pieces here. Yeah, we've got some screws to put down to assemble this with. M.2 heat sink, double-sided cooling. So this wraps around, shows the alignment on this end. You can kind of see how that's machined. That's interesting. That's a lot of work. With those little notches on the ends, both ends. So the drive is going to sit in this tray, and then this heat sink will go on top. And between a heat sink, thermal pad, and the M.2 NVMe drive. Okay. And we're going to be testing primarily on the WD Black SN850. And the way this is supposed to line up, the end with the notch, to line up with the memory. Oh, nice. There's actually three thermal pads in here. I appreciate that. Very nice. Thank you. So I'm just going to lay this hair gingerly for the moment to see how that's going to line up. A little short, but long enough. You can see how that lines up on the end right there. Same thing on this end. Could have been just a hair bit longer. It's long enough. And I'm just going to do a dry assembly to see how this fits. Because I've got to take the uh, covers off. And that works like that. Now, you'll notice that groove is on this end. That groove has to be on this end. So you've got the groove on the end for the drive where the screw goes. So that screw can pass through on that drive through this heat sink. So what we're looking at, something about like that. So as I look at the back end, I want to line that up with that notch so that key is completely clear on this end. And I've got room on this end for the notch to clear that screw on the drive. In this case, to clear that nylon bushing. So it's going to sit right like that. And this includes the screws and the micro screwdriver to put all that together with. So first things first, we'll get this thermal pad peeled off, set it to the memory, the M.2 drive. So I'm going to eyeball the length of that pad. That looks about right. Okay. That all clears. Okay. Now the next step, we've got to line all three of these notches up. This one, this one, and that one. So we will pull. Well, this pad comes up a little bit easier. I like that. It's more of a silicone type pad. Makes it a little easier to reposition it. I like that. Yeah. Then we'll separate that top cover. Aha, we gained a little length doing that. Curious. Okay, memory is set. Container is set. Slot looks good. Line up. And remember, the heat sink needs to be facing up. We should be able to just drop that right in. And it's notched on the ends. And that alignment looks good. Yeah, I'm good with that. Okay, and it looks like the screw holes are going to line up good where we've got it set. So we got three screws on each side to put in. This should be interesting. Oh boy. My concern is manual dexterity with little bitty screws like that. With gloves on. Um, yeah. I like the fact that this is a wraparound. I expect this will perform better 
but I don't know that for a fact because you have two things involved. One, the aluminum heat sink, the way it's designed with the uh, extrusion, the way it's been manufactured. And two, we don't know the uh, characteristics of the thermal pad being used. I do like the way it uh, allows me some movement for adjustment. So let's see how this is going to work putting these screws on. These are tiny. Don't sneeze. Okay. Well, that trick has always worked. That trick's not going to work with these. To be able to hold it with a finger. Yeah, it will. Held the screw with my finger to get it started. Okay. It's got a nice big head on it. And the screwdriver happens to be magnetic. Fantastic. I didn't realize that. Perfect. Smart. Keep it simple. All three of those. I'm going to get them started before I try to secure them. And it looks like we have one extra screw included, which was nice. Machining is good. Assembly is good. Someone put a lot of thought into this. The question is, how good are the thermal characteristics? No matter how pretty something is, function's got to be first. Function over form. Okay, watch those. Make sure they don't get cross-threaded. Now, that's secure. So I'm going to do a little press fit with my finger, with my thumb, to hold it. Just a little bit of pressure on it while I secure it. Now we've got one other one that's going to be larger than this one. And I'm curious because it's a composite, meaning it's uh, copper and aluminum, if it's going to be any better. I don't know. Even the six that we picked, we looked at something that thought, okay, if I were doing this, this is something that I would try. And I'd like to know. But to just pick one, we just didn't think that did the whole thing justice. We need a comparison. So we need to try six and compare. Okay. Secured. Nice. I like the way that all went together. Three screws on one side. And it looks like it's got some little holes down there to breathe, which is interesting. You can see those through the, past the reflection. And we've got three holes on this side. Apparently, excuse me, four holes on this side for it to breathe. And of course, three screws holding it down. And we have clearance for the connector. MHQ JRH. Double-sided cooling. So our alignment, I think, looks good. Let's, uh, let's see how this is going to work. In the card. Connectors in tight. I feel the position for the drive. It locks in. We'll apply the nylon. I'm glad we're doing the testing with this card. Wow. That would have been a hassle. Now, we have one screw left that I'm going to get back in the bag because I don't want to lose it. Because that would be a real bummer. I like the packaging. I appreciate the way they did this. And I really appreciate that they put three thermal pads in here. So, if we swap these out, and I'll keep this other pad, this other uh, plastic cover. If we have to swap these out, which I don't plan on, but if we did, we can. And over time, I've read things uh, like every six months you ought to swap out pads. I'm just saying, okay, that's done, and that's done. Back in the computer. So assembly is complete. That looks good on there. Looks like good clearance. There's another reason I wanted to try that top slot, make sure we clear that item right there on the PCB. I would say we're good to go. Okay, in the box. And we'll do the checklist. We're in the uh, first eight-lane slot. And this is the Gigabyte TRX-40 Designator. And we're putting the uh, WD Black SN850, which is a second-generation PCI Express 4 drive capable of 7,000 megabytes on the Supermicro Dual M.2 NVMe adapter. And we've already bifurcated that particular slot. So now, power. We'll turn it on and energize. System's powering up. Being on the Gigabyte TRX-40 designated with two 16-lane slots and two 8-lane slots, we have the uh, video card in the second 16-lane slot, which is a two-slot EVGA RTX 2080 Ti. In the primary slot, we have the Gigabyte Aorus M.2 16 card. Thunderbolt 3 is down here in a 8-lane slot. We're only using four lanes, so four lanes we lose. And the Super Micro card, which is where the business is at, is right here in the first 8-lane slot. And the top drive which is the WD Black SN850, is the one that has the heat sink. And that's the drive we're going to test. Okay, back into Windows. We'll double check drive placement. And the WD Black SN850 that has the new heat sink we're testing, which is the MHQ JRH, is D drive. Samsung F. No heat sink. So we're going to bring up hardware info. We're going to look at sensors only. And since we have drive telemetry, we only want to see those two drives. WD Black SN850. And the Samsung. Okay, the Samsung has two thermistors. The WD Black, one thermistor. Right now we're at 37 degrees. So let's bring up Crystal Disk Mark and see what our numbers are. One terabyte drive, drive D. One gigabyte test size file. And we're going to run the test. And we're going to be watching that temperature for the current 
the minimum, the maximum, and the average. And right now we are at 38. Test, let's see what we get. We want to make sure we have the speed of the drive, which is 7,000 megabytes thereabouts. And we want to see what kind of temperature we get on that drive with this particular heat sink. And after we've tested all six, then we'll do a summation. But right now we will release these as individual because there's uh, there's a lot involved in putting these on. It's not just the numbers. So I want to thank you guys that uh, have the patience to watch this. Okay, so far 7,000 megabytes on the read. That's good. We're not finished. I'm being a little bit uh, preemptive. 49 degrees. My goal is always to stay below 52. And uh, we got way above that wall ago, like 97 degrees. Ouch. That was on a bare drive. I think it goes into red about 86. So we'll see how we do with this heat sink. Space-wise, if we were to use the slot next to it, which is a single lane slot, we would be right up on that card. But as far as the other card of the greatest important, which is the video card, the RTX 2080 Ti, we're good to go. But we still have another heat sink that is a little bit bigger than this one. The question is, other two things we need to be aware of. One, the size. Two, the temperature. How good is this for what it is, for what it does? Because remember, this is aluminum. The first one we did is aluminum. The second one's aluminum. But this is just a little bit bigger. So far, our maximum is 57. We won't know the maximum until we get to the second number on the writes. And uh, 7,000 megabytes on the read, we should get around 5,000 megabytes on the write. What we're trying to do is to figure out which is the best. To reiterate, we know copper is the best. It's almost twice as effective as aluminum. However, we want to see how effective this aluminum is or can be. And as I've said in the previous segment, we will take the top one or two of whichever is the best, change the thermal pad and see if we can increase the performance. And if we do, by how much? You know, two or three degrees, every little bit helps. Now, if we were to do a better heat sink than this, I could see someone doing silver. But as I've said before, I need access to the uh, bullion and I need access to a Bridgeport mill. Anybody wants to make one out of silver, I'll be happy to. When I first started saying that, it was kind of a joke, but the more I think about it, I'm game if somebody wants to give it a shot. The difference is we're looking at a metal that is uh, so many pennies per pound versus a precious metal that is uh, so many dollars per ounce. But, you know, if you need it, you need it. You do what you got to do. And this is all relevant as we go toward PCI Express 5.0 because we're going to have heat when we go to 15,000 megabytes. You know it. Okay, our top so far is 62 degrees. Pretty good. Not 52, but better than 92. That's a pretty effective cooler. I'm, uh, I'm impressed. Current temperature 59 degrees centigrade or Celsius, whatever you prefer. Maximum temperature is 62. That's an impressive cooler. I mean, it's not as good as I want, but it's, it's better than I thought it'd be. Current temperature 56 degrees. When it stops, I'll stop. Okay. That's aluminum heat sink number two. 55 degrees current temperature, 36 degrees minimum temperature, 62 degrees maximum temperature. That's a good number. And the average was 51 degrees centigrade Celsius. For all you uh, data junkies out there, if you guys are watching this, y'all are hardcore. I appreciate it. But again, the question was asked, so we're doing it. So uh, for those of you that asked the question and want to know the answer, we're doing it. And that's only number two. Now, Coming up in this next video, we're going to take a look at the Sabrent M.2 2280 SSD rocket heatsink. If you'll notice, that rascal's got heat pipes. It's tall. Tallest of the three. And it's a composite. When I say composite, I mean it is copper and aluminum. So that'll be drive number three. I want to thank you guys for watching. This is Builder By. My name is Gil Boyd. We're on to the next video. We're out.